A lot is currently happening in research and development when it's about nuclear energy. The demand for zero-emission, baseload-capable power generation without political dependencies is in high demand worldwide. Hence, also the urge to research new, safer nuclear power technologies. 439 nuclear reactors are currently operational worldwide. 108 more are planned or under construction and will supply the grid by 2030. While the Western countries are concerned about nuclear power, nations like China, Russia, and India are leading the list for new nuclear reactors. In this context, thorium reactors are mentioned particularly often. China's first liquid salt thorium reactor is coming online soon, and India even wants to shift its entire nuclear economy on thorium. We took a closer look at the nuclear thorium technology. It promises more energy with less fissile material, less nuclear waste, and greater safety. Can the reactors really deliver what they promise? How advanced is the state of the art, and are the predictions about the miracle reactor correct? Before we dive into the topic, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel, and don't miss out on any of our new content by activating the bell icon. Thorium, named after the Norse god Thor, is the 90th element in the periodic table. It has two fewer protons than uranium and is 3.4 times more common on the Earth's crust. If we look at the geological distribution of thorium, it turns out that India has the most of it, an estimated 850,000 tons, which is equivalent to 13% of the worldwide thorium reserves. That's a lot and also the reason why it makes sense for India to develop nuclear thorium technology with the goal of energy independence. A big part of the thorium is stored at the tropical beaches in the sand. But don't worry now if you plan a trip to the Indian beaches, because thorium is only naturally available with the isotope 232, a low radioactive material which is not harmful for humans. But how can we actually generate energy with a low radioactive material? This is where it gets interesting. The concept of thorium molten salt reactor is ingenious. The weakly radioactive thorium isotope 232 is actually unsuitable for a nuclear fission process. But as a fertile material, it has to first be transmuted into the fissile, more radioactive thorium isotope 233 by absorbing a neutron of a neutron source. Therefore, uranium 233 is used to start a thorium fuel cycle. The thorium-233 then becomes in a beta decay conversion cycle, first protactinium-233 and ultimately uranium-233, an ideal fissile material for energy production. When the uranium isotope decays, two neutrons are released and the process repeats itself. The result is a closed cycle that remains in place as long as thorium is available or replenished. This process is also called thermal breeding. It produces energy and more fissile material at the same time, less radioactive waste, and according to Nobel Prize winner in physics, Carlo Rubia, with only one ton of thorium, it's possible to generate the same amount of energy as with 200 tons of uranium, or 3,500,000 tons of coal. Just think for a moment about these numbers. That's insane! At the same time, Thorium is an abundant material, which is currently a byproduct of the rare earth material industry. But the biggest advantage is that thorium is not a fuel rod, but dissolved in molten salt. Thanks to the salt, the reactor regulates itself autonomously. Even nuclear catastrophes should no longer exist. The salt in which the thorium is liquefied at an operating temperature of about 500 to 1000 degrees, it can regulate itself in a meltdown situation. If the reactor overheats, the liquid expands in proportion to the heat. By increasing the volume, the density decreases, which reduces the reactivity of the nuclear fission process. Shortly, the fission reaction happens more slowly and the reactor cools down. A real overheating with potential danger is therefore impossible. This principle has been known for a long time. It was developed in the 50s and 60s in the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. 
So if thorium molten salt reactors have so many advantages, why don't we use them? Well, the molten salt increases the meltdown safety on one hand. It decreases it elsewhere massively. A huge problem with molten salt reactors has always been corrosion. The molten hot salt attacks the materials from which the reactors are made, and the experts back then came to the conclusion that a final material combination to meet all the reactor requirements is not yet possible. And since then, thorium reactors have not been researched and progressed anymore. But finally, thorium nuclear technology is gaining momentum. In the Wu Wei Desert, China has built a 444 billion US dollars thorium molten salt test reactor. The 2 megawatt experimental reactor has been approved in August this year. And if the reactor proves successful, China plans to build a scaled up reactor with a capacity of 373 megawatts by 2030. As this type of nuclear reactor does not rely on water as a coolant, it can also be used in desert areas for energy supply. As we already explained before, thorium is the byproduct of rare earth mineral extraction, and with China holding the monopoly on rare earth minerals, it is a strategic shift towards thorium for China's energy security and its zero emission goals by 2050. And as India holds a lot of thorium reserves as well, but just very little of uranium, it also has the dream to shift its nuclear economy to thorium. To become energy independent and to make use of its thorium resources, the country follows a three-stage nuclear power program. In the first stage, they built pressurized heavy water reactors which run by very classic uranium. In the second stage, fast breeders will be built, which run by plutonium and fissioned uranium from the first stage. And in addition, thorium should also start to be used. The experiences from the second stage should then be incorporated into the final third stage, where ultimately thorium is used on a large scale. So there are plenty of experimental research reactors built worldwide to finally advance the nuclear thorium technology. But there is an even bigger problem. Highly radioactive waste is also generated from the thorium liquid salt reactors. While some waste from conventional nuclear power plants can be recycled, unfortunately, the reactor also produces its own nuclear waste. The uranium isotope 232 is produced in the thorium reactor. Although it has a half-life of 70 years, it emits high-energy gamma rays which makes the end repository even more problematic. Maybe a similar concept is better. With 85,000 cubic meters of nuclear waste in the United States alone, another type of nuclear reactor could supply the entire nation with electricity for up to 1,000 years. If you want to know more about this reactor, click on the displayed video. And also, subscribe to this channel for free so you don't miss out on any new videos.